Hey everybody, Lee from PC Junkie Mods. Today we're going to have a look at the new Intel 730 series SSD. In front of me, I have an assortment of SSDs. Uh, along with that, I'm going to pair the, the SSDs up with the Intel RAID controller. It's a 12 gig controller. It is the Intel RS3DC080. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test these SSDs on this RAID controller. Basically the reason I want to do that is, is there's a lot of speculation on RAID setups. Whereas you have onboard, you have soft, software, and then you also have um, hardware RAID controller. Um, now there's some benefits and there's not so good benefits. Like onboard, if you blew up your motherboard, then uh, you, know, you pretty much have to replace that motherboard with the same motherboard or the same controller. So basically what I mean by that is if, uh, like my a friend of mine, he had a, uh, a gigabyte board and the, the RAID controller went out on it. Well, when that went out on it, he lost his whole RAID array. So just to kind of give you an idea, with a RAID card, I can take that RAID card and move my whole RAID over to any motherboard. So it wouldn't matter if I was on a 775 socket motherboard back in the day and I had my data and stuff on this RAID setup with a RAID card. And if I move that over to, let's say, an X79 system, no problem, install the driver back up and running. Whereas on board, if I was on a 775 socket and obviously the chipset from back then is a lot different than now, um, I'd have to rebuild the array, the RAID. So, um, all right, so let's get a little bit into the hardware we're actually gonna be using. Like I said, we were gonna be using eight Intel 730 series SSDs, the Intel RAID controller, and as far as the test bench and setup that we'll be using it on, I'm on a, a Demis Tech test bench, and it is on a Rampage Gene motherboard X79 chipset with an Intel 4960X. I'm also using my ASUS GTX 780Ti and Adata's XPG 1866 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, as far as cooler, I'm using my Cooler Master uh, TPC812 on this setup, and then I'm powering it with my Enermax um, Platymax power supply. So that's what we're going to be using for the RAID testing. So what I'm doing now is I'm hooking up all the drives to the, uh, the SATA controller. Um, I've already got um, four of the drives already over here. They're hooked in, and I'm working on the other four now. So. Um, once I get that all situated here, we'll be able to fire up the benchmark. Okay, so let's talk about the different RAID levels. Uh, the most commonly used is RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and even RAID 10. Um, there are other ones besides those ones, but the ones we're going to talk about today are those, those different RAID levels. So RAID 0 is basically taking, for instance, two drives and making them one drive. So what you, when you do that, you get more performance out of your versus one, like this one single drive read and writes at 550 and 470. Well, if you combine these two together in a RAID 0, you get about twice that, maybe even more, depending on how you set it and how you tweak it. Um, the only bad thing about that is if one of these drives dies, you lose everything on it. Okay, so a lot of people aren't too keen about running a RAID 0. I like running a RAID 0 because of the fact I'm not worried about what's on these drives because everything's on my big RAID array. So anything that's important to me is already backed up somewhere else. So now for a RAID 0, you do need two drives or more. Um, a RAID 1, you need two drives or more. So now the difference between the RAID 0 and the RAID 1 is, RAID 0 is performance, like I said. RAID 1 is a mirror image. So this drive will be mirrored to this drive. You're not getting any performance gain, but your data is safe. So if you don't care about capacity because by doing RAID 0 you get capacity and performance but with RAID 1 you get a mirrored image so if this drive dies all you need to do is replace it you never you're never down on your RAID because this one's still up and running so for RAID 5 you, it requires at least three drives or more basically what it is is you could lose one drive and as long as you replace that one drive fast you know quick fast in a hurry you'd be okay, but if a second drive goes down in your RAID 5, everything is gone. So um, there's another way to do the multiple drive setup. Uh, the best way I can recommend if you have the money and you want to, you know, a lot of, uh, if you have a lot of data you need to save or whatever would be a RAID 10. 
Now what a RAID 10 requires is four drives at the minimum and what it is is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. So basically you're taking the performance and capacity and you're also getting the redundancy. So out of four drives, we have four 480 gig SSDs here. You're able to write, these two will combine, these two will be a mirror. Meaning that these are mirrored, these are mirrored, so on, so on and so forth. So out of the 1800 gigs that you have here, you're actually only gonna get to be able to read and write on to 960 of it, which is still a lot more than most people have on an SSD for an OS or whatever. But at the same time, if one of the four drives dies, you're able to replace it. And if I'm not mistaken, if you lose two drives, you're still up and running as long as you replace those two. So that is a good thing with uh, RAID 10, but it is a little more costly because it requires identical drives and four at the minimum. So that covers a little bit of the basics of RAID. Um, I'll put some links down in the <coughs> description for where you can get more information for RAID, just to give you an idea. Um, let's go ahead and get this hooked up and, and, and get going. Here. All right, so we are in the controller now, the controller BIOS. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the RAID. And while we're setting up the RAID, I'll talk a little bit about stripe sizes. So uh, I try to familiarize myself a little bit with the controller's uh, BIOS. It's a little different than what I've ever used before, uh, but pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So right now, um, as you can see, it says no configuration present, Intel RAID controller, blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here and I'll hit enter on no configuration present. It takes me to another screen where I'm able to choose my RAID level and then data protection and um, basic settings and stuff like that. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here and it shows you the different RAID levels. You got a 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. So um, what I'm going to choose is zero, and then I'm going to move on to the next uh, option here. And basically here you're choosing your drives. So I'm going to go ahead and choose all of them. So you hit the space bar, and it actually gives it a, um, as you can see, zero, zero. So the next one would be zero, one, so on and so forth. And then, uh, so seven. And then I think I need to hit enter. Well, what's next? So then it gives me my basic settings of uh, what size I want the array. I'll just leave it at default, which is uh, like three and a half terabytes. And terabyte, and then the name, I'll call it Intel 730. And then I hit enter, and I'll move on to advanced. Let's see what advanced has got. So here's uh, a little bit about stripes. So basically your stripe size depends on what you do. If you're writing a lot of big files, um, let's say you're doing video editing or whatever and you're moving a lot of videos and stuff, then you're gonna want to use um, the bigger stripe. If you're doing a lot of little stuff or you're not sure, uh, the little stuff would be the smaller stripe size. The safe bet would be to use the 64K, which is default on most controllers. Um, by using the 64K, you're kind of in the middle, so your performance is gonna be really good, regardless if you're doing big files or small files. Um, so that's usually what I'll use is the 64K. On this setup, we're going to go ahead and use the 64K. So I'll hit enter. 64 is the bottom. It actually goes all the way up to 1 meg on this drive. So um, I'll try 64 and then maybe we'll come back and switch it to something else and see what happens. And then, so that's it for that. Hit OK. Now, why are you initial? So if, if if you, initial, you want to initialize the drives because basically if you don't initialize the drives your performance is going to take a hit because then it will have to initialize in Windows. Um, if you initialize now with SSDs it's going to be done pretty much. Um, with spin disks I've seen it take as long as two and a half days. Um, so it just depends on the performance of the drives. If it's a spin disk it's going to take a long time like I had 24 terabytes. That took quite some time to initialize. It spent literally like two and a half days in Windows. Um, the good thing is, is you don't have to leave your system on, system on the whole time. It's every time you restart your system, it, it continues to initialize. So it, like if I use my computer for 10 hours today and then I turn it off and then tomorrow I fire it back up and, and it's on for another 10 hours, it'll keep going until it's done. It's not gonna have to start over per se, so. 
All right, so after massive testing with different stripe sizes and different file sizes and different programs, we used HD Tune, we used ATTO, which is I think pronounced Addo. We've also used uh, Crystal Disk, and we got a wide variety of different numbers, uh, but the most consistent number that I saw pop up was in the four gig range, 4,000 megabyte, and basically, the reason we chose to use this RAID card was it is a 12 gig card and I wanted to see the difference in this card versus my 6 gig card. Um, so basically by my 6 gig card is based on the PCI Express 2.0. This card is based on the PCI Express 3.0 which enables more bandwidth and I think in, when I originally used my Adaptec card we were just saturating the, the bandwidth there and everything was just capped. It wasn't going any further and uh, you know after thinking about it and looking into it come to find out that the 12 gig card has proven that it would get a better bandwidth and way better numbers. Um, a little bit about the drive that I did not mention was the the 730 series is the new flagship for your your consumer based um, drives the enthusiasts and stuff like that it is based on the same platform as the Intel Enterprise Drive which is the uh, I think it's the 3500 series and the 3700 series drive um, so being that it's based on that same platform you're getting at a consumer level you're getting close to the enterprise level uh, performance and stuff and so basically after running all of my tests and stuff with the RAID card, um, the, the numbers were pretty, I was pretty amazed to see uh, 4 gig read and write to say the least. And um, I'll go ahead and show you some of those benchmarks and I'll post them up at the end of this video. Once again, thanks for watching my video. Until next time.